to know that God is with you is enough to calm you because here it is God may allow you to go into the furnace but the truth of the matter is just to know that he can deliver you he has power to do that or to ease your troubled mind Welcome to Mount Zion, where you will have a mountaintop worship experience. My title this morning would be, Who Touched Me? I'll be going from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 34, and I'll be reading the entire passage from 21 to 34. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he came, he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying, please come and put your hand on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead was, getting, was not getting better, she was getting worse. When she heard Jesus came, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I could just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her blood bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding all around you, his disciples said, and yet you ask, who touched me? When Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it, then the woman, knowing what had happened, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. They say the most me first medium of communication is a sense of touch. Before we understand words, we understand the meaning of a touch. With the touch, we can sense hostility, and with the touch, we can sense love. In Scripture, we see Jesus touching people on a regular basis. We see people crying out to their master, have mercy upon me, touch me that I may be healed. But in this case, we don't see this woman crying out, Jesus, touch me, make me whole. Also, we do not see Jesus seeking this woman to heal her. The message this morning has to do with touching and being in close contact with someone who is considered unclean. You see, there's a Leviticus law in Leviticus 15, 19. When a person has a wound or a flow of blood, anyone they touch will be considered unclean. What was the problem with this woman? She had a continuing problem. There was an issue of blood for 12 years. We find this in Mark 5, 25. She had been ceremonial unclean for 12 years. It was financially draining. The scripture says she spent all that she had. And even if the issue stopped, she had to wait seven days before she can be declared cleansed. Mark 5, 26 says that she was in pain. She was not getting any better, but rather grew worse. She was a social outcast. Leviticus 15, 31 says, Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they not die in their uncleanness. So she had to be cast out from the crowd, from the community. But imagine having a condition that separated you from your family and friends every day of your life for 12 years. To get a perspective what 12 years is. 144 months. 625 days, 714 weeks. 
That's 4,380 days, 105,120 hours and counting. Separated, isolated. You think you're having trouble with the COVID-19 pandemic. For 12 years, she had to share, bear this emotional, this psychological band baggage of being unclean and untouchable. No social gathering, no hugs, no kisses. She could not prepare for her family food and other house cleaning chores, even if she had to this time had a family after 12 years. She could not do housework. She couldn't be a wife. In fact, some people use this as a ground for separation and divorce. She couldn't be a mommy. She had to sit in an isolated spot or house, maybe separated from her main house, just staring at the walls. And so many changes, so many changes can take, 12, take place in 12 years. 12-year-old Pookie was about 24 now, finally getting his life together, just starting to work on his master's in pastoral study, and accepted an associate pastor assignment, and she couldn't be there. She couldn't be there to congratulate him. Naturally, I'm speculating. For all intents and purposes, she was as good as dead in prison for 12 years. Now you know why she was desperate. Unclean people quite often surround themselves with other out clean, unclean people, and they sometimes bury themselves in the depths of depression. That's how it is. When you isolate it, when you separate it, when you cast aside, you have a tendency to seek other people who are isolated and cast aside. For 12 years, she lived with this stigma. For 12, 12 years, people avoided her. For 12 years, she couldn't associate with anyone except others who was isolated and separated. But one day, something happened. We don't know exactly what happened. One day it happened. She got, she got fed up with being unclean. Some of you may know what that means and what it feels like to be unclean and finally you get to the point that you begin to see, get sick and tired of being sick and tired. But then she hears about Jesus. He had just returned from the country of the Gadarenes on the other side of, of the Galilee Sea when, where he delivered a man from an unclean spirit. And now he was back on this side of the sea. And he says, she says, he can heal her. But Jesus could not touch her, she thought. But Jesus might become unclean if he healed her with the touch. Because the scripture says, whoever touches her shall be unclean. That's Leviticus 15, 19. But she was desperate. She rushes to the center of town, breathlessly hoping that she could still catch him. But then she stops short because she sees Jesus is surrounded by a crowd of people making their way from him and towards the center of town. Have you ever been that desperate that you want to get to Jesus, but there was always something there, always something there stopping you in your way? But she was desperate. I must get to Jesus. She refuses to be continued in this untouchable state. And in a moment of inspiration, it occurs to her, oh, I know now. Maybe if she could touch him, that's not the same as he touching her. Very creative, very creative. When you're desperate, you get creative. You try to think of ways that you can get to, get to your salvation, that you get to your hope. And maybe... She could quietly make her way through the crowd and touch, yes. If she could just touch the hem of his garment, then she might be healed. But you see, in those days, the rabbis wore a cloak and, and with tassels at the corners and edge of the cloak, and, and the tassel had a blue cord woven into reminding them of God's law and their duty to keep his law. Many people had a belief that these tassels were sacred objects. 
And it is the only thing that seems to explain the fact that she sought to touch the hem of his garment. So she slowly, strategically makes her way through the crowd. Nobody pays much attention, attention to her, but perhaps she pulled her shawl down close to her face and avoid being recognized as that unclean woman. Have you ever been in a state that you don't want to be recognized as being unclean? Some are probably annoyed as she elbowed her way through the crowd, pushing and shoving. At last, she's close. But she hears Jairus telling Jesus to come and heal his 12-year-old daughter who was dying. Jesus begins to move towards Jairus' home. Interesting set of events. Jesus is going to heal a 12-year-old girl who is dying and we have someone seeking him who has been dying for 12 years. But God, only God can deal with a situation like that. Jesus was in the right spot, on his way to heal, and while he's on his way to heal, he's healing. What a mighty God we serve. What does she do now? She refuses to miss his opportunity. Quickly, she kneels and she tries to reach out for Jesus and the foot, and he, he moves the foot forward and she reaches out to try to touch the hem of his garment, that his foot there, that same foot that we nailed to the cross, that same foot, foot that said in Genesis that it would crush the head of the serpent. She crawls and she reaches out and she finally, she grabs hold of the tassel hanging from his shawl and immediately Mark uses the word straightforward. Mark is a chapter to deal with Jesus as, as being an activity person. She feels something. It was a change in her body. It's like a tingling sensation, a warmth that curses through her body, and she knows that she has been healed. You see, we come closest to God in our lowest moments. It's easy to hear God when you're stripped of pride, and when you're stripped of arrogance, and when you're stripped of all those things that have kept you busy, and you have nothing to rely on except God. Just like this pandemic. This pandemic it gave us an opportunity. It stripped us from the activities that we have been doing all our lives and doing church work instead of the work of the church. And if we have missed the opportunity that this was a time that God was trying to really get in touch with us, if we miss that, you miss an opportunity because people are waiting to get back to normal. Maybe God wasn't satisfied with normal. I'm sure he's never been satisfied with most of our normal. We're closer to God in those lower moments. It may be painful, but, but when you do get to that spot, God is there waiting for us, like he's always waiting for us. Jesus, he could have said, I've done anything he wanted at this point, but he chose to turn the spotlight on a woman who wanted nothing more than just to slip away into the crowd and make her way home. She didn't want attention. She didn't want to make a public speech. She just wanted to get out there to, to go home and get on with her life, to pick up the pieces where her life stopped 12 years ago. But obviously Jesus, like always, has something else in mind. At once, Jesus realized the power of healing and going out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Oh, Master, you see people crowding against you all over the place. In fact, I had to push a guy out the way a couple of minutes ago. And yet you're going to ask, Master, who touched me? But Jesus said, no, no, you don't understand. He kept looking around. Somebody touched me. Somebody touched me with a special type of touch. Something came from me, a healing power. Jesus looking around. It's interesting. The Lord God Jesus, who knows everything at this point, had to look and discover who touched him. See, occasionally, God will give Jesus some heads up of what people are thinking, what to expect. But this time, it's almost like God permitted him to discover something. 
And I'm sure he jo enjoyed that moment because he realized that God was still working and he's always working in his life. But Jesus kept looking around. Who touched me? Who touched me? Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, she came and she stood and she fell to her feet. Trembling with fear, uh, she was untouchable. Perhaps Jesus wanted to say, what are you doing touching me, you untouchable? And her fear, but she told him the whole truth. She gave him her testimony. She gave him a testimony how for 12 years she had been isolated. 12 years she couldn't be the mother that she wanted to be. 12 years because she had lived in this bondage of isolation. 12 years. A sad, depressing story of 12 years of humiliation and isolation. Not being able to pray in a temple. Bible studies in the soil. Do you have something in your life that's keeping you, holding you back, isolating you, making you unclean, that you can't really get in close proximity with the saints? Clothes can't be what God wants you to be because of this malady that you have. A sad, depressing story. But now she was free. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Amen, amen. But well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus said, your faith has healed you. I thought Jesus healed her. He did. Jesus does not move outside of faith. Everything in God's economy works through faith. The just shall live by faith without faith. Faith is impossible to please God. We must believe that God is. That's faith. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Our faith will drive us to elbow our way through the crowds of tradition, through the crowds of racism, through the crowd of culture, our politics, and our ethnicity. Our goal should be to touch, to be in touch, and to be touched. By Jesus. Let me say that again. Our goal should always be to touch, to be in touch, and to be touched by Jesus. Amen. Did I hear an amen? Amen. It was the isolation and the spiritual death she experienced day after day that ruined her life. And when Jesus stopped and publicly exposed her healing, he gave her what she needed the most, the opportunity to give God the glory after receiving a miracle. Because Jesus always liked to highlight his father. He always wants his father to be up front. He always wants his father to get credit for the power, the restoration, the healing, the strength. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him, that is the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their what? Testimony. Everybody knew she was healed. Everybody knew she was healed. They knew it was safe for them to touch her again, to embrace her, to welcome her. She knew that she was in back in good fellowship and relationship with her father. This woman was healed not because Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, she was healed not because Jesus wanted to heal her, because he didn't even know anything about her, or because she was the only one who needed healing. I'm sure everybody in that crowd probably needed healing of some sort. So the question is, why was she healed? Hundreds was pushing about against Jesus. They were not healed because some of them for various reasons. To some it was a good show because anytime Jesus is involved, it's always something exciting going on. And there were others who loved crowded events. They loved to be with the crowd to hold the sign, Jesus' life matters, and whatever the signs would be. 
There were others in the crowd, but they're not here. This woman was there because her hope and healing was there in the person of Jesus. On a crowded street, an insignificant old lady got Jesus' attention. Being touched by numerous peoples in a crowd, this was a touch that literally stopped Jesus in his tracks. What type of touch does it take to get Jesus' attention? Evidently, there can be a motive behind a touch. Number one, I would say a touch based on knowledge. It says that she aimed for the hem of his garment. Malachi 4, 2 reads, But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. See, these talents on the edge of his garment were called wings. She knew the promises of God. We need to know the promises of God. Promises are like having money in a bank. If you do not know the promises God has deposited into your account, you'll never know to make a withdrawal. Number two, a touch based on faith. She believed in expected results. The scripture, scripture said that Jesus could not do many miracles in his hometown. Why? Because of unbelief. That could be a reason that many of our touching does not get the attention of the Lord himself. Then there's a touch made out of brokenness. Psalms 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Because a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. Despise meaning thou will not play down or, or think insignificant. Psalms 44, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Psalms 147, 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. We're talking about touching Jesus, getting his attention, and expecting results. The thing about touching Jesus is that he returns the compliment. He touches us back. This poem says a lot about the changes that a touch from Jesus can make. Was battered and scarred. And the auctioneer thought it was scarcely worth his while to waste much time in his old violin, but held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good folks? He cried. Who will start the bidding for me? One dollar, one dollar? Then two, only two? Two dollars, and who make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three, but no. In the room far back stood a gray-haired man who came forward and picked up the bow, and wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening his loose strings, he played a melody sweet and slow as a caroling angel sing. The music ceased, and the auctioneer with a voice that was quiet and low said, who am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars, who make it two? Two thousand, who make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, and going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried, we do not understand what change is worth. Swift came to reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune, battered and scarred by sin, it's auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He's going once, he's going twice. He's going and almost gone, but the master comes. And the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Let us pray. On behalf of Pastor Kevin B. Mack and the Mount Zion Church family, we would like to say thank you for tuning in. 
We hope that you have been blessed by something you have seen or heard today. Please stay connected to us through all of our social platforms. You can find us on our website at www.mtzecourse.org. You could also search for us on Facebook by searching for Mount Zion eCourse. You could also connect with us on Instagram at mtzecourse. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this page.